<clears throat> A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. It was not till 14 years had passed that I went up to Jerusalem again. I went with Barnabas and took Titus with me. I went there as the result of a revelation and privately I laid before the leading men the good news as I proclaim it among the pagans. <clears throat> I did so for fear the course I was adopting or had already adopted would not be allowed. On the contrary, they recognized that I had been commissioned to preach the good news to the uncircumcised, just as Peter had been commissioned to preach it to the circumcised. The same person whose action had made Peter the apostle of the circumcised had given me a similar mission to the pagans. So James, Cephas, and John, these leaders, these pillars, shook hands with Barnabas and me as a sign of partnership. We were to go to the pagans and they to the circumcised. The only thing they insisted on was that we should remember to help the poor, as indeed I was anxious to do. When Cephas came to Antioch, however, I opposed him to his face since he was manifestly in the wrong. His custom had been to eat with the pagans but after certain friends of James arrived, he stopped doing this and kept away from them altogether for fear of the group that insisted on circumcision. The other Jews joined him in this pretense and even Barnabas himself felt obliged to copy their behavior. When I saw they were not respecting the true meaning of the good news, I said to Cephas in front of everyone, in spite of being a Jew, you live like the pagans and not like the Jews, so you have no right to make the pagans copy Jewish ways. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to the whole world, proclaim the good news. Go out to the whole world, proclaim the good news. Oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. Acclaim him, all you peoples. Go out to the whole world, proclaim the good news. Strong is his love for us, he is faithful forever. Go out to the whole world, <coughs> proclaim the good news. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Train me, Lord, to observe your law, to keep it with my heart. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel as told to us today by St. Luke. Glory, Glory to you, to o you Lord. O Lord. Once Jesus was in a certain place praying, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, say this when you pray, Father, may your name be held holy, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive each other, each one who is in debt to us and do not put us to the test. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, teach us to pray. The response of Jesus to this request of one of his disciples was to present him with the prayer that we refer to as the Our Father or the Lord's Prayer. Of this prayer, Saint Andre Besset 
once said, When you say the Our Father, God's ear is next to your lips. Or again, the great mystical doctor of the church, Saint Teresa of Avila, gave this advice while praying the Lord's Prayer. She said, much more is accomplished by a single word of the Our Father said now and then from our heart than by the whole prayer repeated many times in haste and without attention. And then Saint Therese of Lisieux said that the Our Father was one of the prayers she prayed when she felt so spiritually barren and dry that she could not summon up a single worthwhile thought. Now, since many of us are very familiar with this prayer taught to us by Jesus himself, there is that temptation to pray this prayer in a somewhat rote way. We can easily fall, fail to say it from the depths of our hearts, making each word our own, offered with the utmost confidence in a God, a Father, who cares deeply for us and who loves us. So maybe today, as we reflect on this gospel passage, we could reflect a little bit on this great prayer given to us by the Son of God himself. He is the author of this perfect prayer, and so we should use it as the foundation of all our prayer. Try to follow the advice of St. Teresa of Avila that I mentioned earlier. Take each word of that prayer and pray it slowly, intentionally, and with love. Begin by acknowledging God as Father. Think of the intimate care he has for you as a person just as a perfect parent would. See in God and see God in a real, intimate and personal way. This perfect prayer begins by acknowledging who God is. And then it continues with seven perfect petitions to meditate upon. Perhaps Today, take one of those petitions, reflect on it, so that the richness of this prayer can and will have a transformative effect upon your life. And as the Synod continues in Rome this week, we bring those present at the Synod in prayer to the Lord this morning as we pray the prayer for the Synod. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name. With you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.